On the eastern coast of Bulgaria, where the sands meet the Black Sea, lies the resort town of Varna. It was here in 1972 that some routine works to lay cables and drainage in a field uncovered one of the richest graveyards in history. The significance of the find was realised almost immediately, and Dr Ivan Ivanov soon uncovered 281 graves in the area. The most obvious significance of the site is that it constitutes one of the earliest and most dense concentrations of gold in the world. The site has been securely dated to the middle phase of the Balkan Copper Age in the early 4th millennium BC, and here we see high-quality gold products flourishing, being made and being deposited in graves. One grave in particular contained 216 gold objects with a combined weight of 1,092 grams. Whoever these people were, they clearly held power, and actually the most surprising thing is that the graves which had no bodies, the cenotaphs, it had even more gold than those with bodies. The question is, what significance does all this gold hold on the shores of the Black Sea? Are we looking at conspicuous consumption by deposition, or does it hold a wider significance? To answer this question, we must look at the other items that the people were buried with, not just the gold. Most of the graves contained objects which were made of a wide variety of materials, and obviously, in the Copper Age, copper was also to be found. Copper tools were prevalent in many of the graves. However, these tools do little to reveal the motivations behind the graveyard. Rather, the prevalence of shells like the spondylus shell and the dentalium shells reveal that these people were collecting objects from around the known world and gathering them together to make fine objects like spondylus and dentalium necklaces. The presence of fine minerals like carnelian reveal an appreciation of the textures and rich colours which they could draw to themselves via trade networks. Ceramics decorated with geometric designs outlined in graphite and highly stylized figures reveal an appreciation of design, texture and all of the elements which go into making these objects. Objects range from exquisitely made pressure flaked obsidian glass knives to relatively easy to make bone carvings of women or goddesses, and even miniaturised furniture and bowls, fashioned almost like toys to our eyes. The range of objects found at Varna do not convey graves which are intended merely to represent intrinsic wealth. It is our modern sensibilities that lead us to focus primarily on the gold, and quite rightly the gold does serve as a symbol for the region. There are those who suspect that the true nature of Varna is best understood in the context of all of the objects. Every item, from the gold to the shells, has been gathered from far away, to a small town on the coast of what is now Bulgaria, and every object would have reflected the people from whom they had been gathered. The archaeology hints that in the Copper Age, where this resort town now stands, the people were not merely gathering gold and wealth, but rather more valuably, gathering human relationships and interconnectivity.